Well, praise the Lord. God is good. God is good all the time. I just want to invite people from YouTube, especially tonight. There aren't many people here, but you know what? God came for one. And the Lord will minister to one, even two or three or four. When I, when I came here four times in 2019 and 20, I flew from Ohio, and I just wanted to be here. I was desperate to get free. I was desperate to have my call. I was desperate to have my destiny. And I would have been, if I'd have been the only person sitting in here listening to these ministers, I would have been so thankful that they, that they were here. I just wanted whatever God had for me. So, and if you're back in listening on YouTube, you can do this from home. And it's amazing sometimes. You get more, you get more freedom from home than you do from here sometimes. It just depends. But anyway, I just want to um, invite everybody here to the Arizona Deliverance Center and to the people who are here. Um, I have some announcements. We have Monday nights at 6.30. We have a Zoom meeting with Julie Andrews, Sister Julie Andrews, and there's other team members on there. And then on Tuesday nights, we have a in-person meeting with Julie Andrews, and then other team members are here with her um, in the little sanctuary at 6.30 on Tuesday nights. And then on Wednesday nights, we have a Zoom meeting at 6 o'clock with Brother Rick Cott and other team members on there, and it's been, I guess it's been really amazing lately. And so I just encourage you to come on there and get deliverance and get healed and get free and just let the Lord bless you and get you to a place where you can bless others. And uh, tomorrow we have a children's deliverance in the little sanctuary with Stephanie Garcia. She's going to be sharing the word there tomorrow. It's at 10 o'clock, and that's for children under 13. So under 13 is who we, who is usually administered to here there so um parents bring your kids grandmas grandpas bring your kids bring the kids they need free they they can deliverance is a children's bread and it's also for children so don't leave them out they're important they're important and we have donation boxes on our doors back there so if you'd like to give money you can um, everybody here is nobody's paid it's all volunteer it's out of love for Jesus and love for you. So I thank you for anybody who is, um, who is donating to this ministry because it is wonderful. It's a worthy cause for sure. Um, anything I'm leaving out? I don't think so. Oh, there's a bookstore, and Lori's in the bookstore. <laughs> she's not right now, but <laughs> she's in there, and she's a wonderful lady, and she has a lot of wisdom. So if you're here and you need some wisdom, go see her. And I thank you, uh, Lord, for this night. I thank you, Jesus, for your goodness, God. I thank you, Lord. I was trying to think, what am I going to pray tonight? But you know what? I think the thing I love the most about deliverance in these last years is peace, that you can just have peace in your heart, peace in your mind. Your mind doesn't have to race. You don't have to worry. You can just have peace in the midst of anything. And I thank you for that peace, Lord. And I pray, God, that you'll just bring that peace tonight. And I thank you for Brother Francis, God. He is a wonderful minister for the Lord, a humble servant. I thank you, Lord, for using him and moving on him and filling us, Lord. And as the, as the title says, let that fire fall. Lord, let the fire fall. Thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do in here tonight, God, what you're going to accomplish. Oh, and there is deliverance training every fourth Saturday. So don't forget that. That's really important. That's at 12 o'clock. Sorry about that. Interruption in prayer, but I had to remember that. So anyway, Lord, I just thank you and praise you, and I just give you glory for everything, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. How's everyone tonight? <laughs> I love that. It's going to be great tonight. Because our God is here.
So tonight, let's have a word of prayer. Father, Lord, help me, Lord. Help me bring forth your word. Let your word like lightning, like fiery arrows, hit their targets. Change hearts, O oh God. Deliver hearts, lives, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Abba Father. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, tonight, um, the title of the message is Let the Fire Fall. Let the Fire Fall. So what type of fire are we talking about here? Now, the fire, you know, does two things. Fire is a good sanitizer. You know, um, fire is for judgment. And fire also um, relates to the presence of God. Amen? So, let's look at um, the different type of fire here. I'm sure you all know what that mushroom cloud is. That's nuclear fire or atomic fire. It says, for every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. You know, if you watch the, the movies of those days, you know, or the wars, the British and American wars, you know, they carry guns, they shoot at each other, they run at each other and start stabbing each other, fighting, you know, and it's bloody. That's the way all the um, cowboys and the Indians, you know, all the noise, oh, 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 and all that stuff. So that's how battles used to be fought, with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. But this is a prophetic word that but this battle is going to be with what? With f fire, with burning and fuel of fire. This is a prophetic word concerning atomic or nuclear fire. So this is what we are going to be contending with. Maybe this, this very decade or next decade, we have to contend with this atomic fire or nuclear fire. Now, the next thing we're going to see, okay, let's look at the next slide. Now, we're going to take a look at Zechariah chapter 5, verse 1 to 8. Now, in the book of Zechariah, he saw, the prophet saw a flying roll, you know, or a flying scroll. You know, when you roll a paper, you know, a flying that's exactly what he saw. So all he could compare it with was what? A flying roll. And then let's continue to see. Uh, verse 2 says, And he said unto me, What is that? And I answered, I see a flying roll. The length, the length thereof is 20 cubits. That's about 30 feet. And the breadth thereof is 10 cubits, which is about, uh, the circumference is about 6 feet in circumference, or about three feet in diameter. Now, let's listen to what it says here. Verse 3 says, Zechariah 5, 3 says, Then said he unto me, This is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. For everyone that stealeth shall be cut off as on this side, according to it, and everyone that sweareth shall be cut off as on that side, according to it. Verse 4. And I will bring, forth, say, I will bring it forth, said the Lord of hosts, and shall enter into the house of the thief, and into the house of him that sweareth falsely by my name. So what is saying that this fire is going, to be, is going to be selective. The fire will begin to move. Hey, is that a thief? Pam. Oh, is this a liar? Pam. You get what I'm saying? So it's going to be selective fire because... Remember in Psalm 91, we are told, a thousand shall fall what? At your side. Ten thousand on your right hand, but it will not come nigh you. 
Because God is going to watch, watch over his own. It is the wicked that will be taken and the good will be left behind. So this fire is going to be what? Selective. So let's go on concerning this fire. Verse 5. Then the angel that talked with me went forth and said unto me, Lift up now thy eyes and see what is this that went forth. And I said, What is it? And he said, It is an effort that went forth. He said, Moreover, this is their substance, oh sorry, this is their resemblance throughout all the earth. And behold, there was lifted up a talent of lead, and this is a woman. That's his translation there. This is fire that seated in the midst of the ephah. And he said, this is wickedness. This is wickedness. This is what? Wickedness. Atomic fire is what? Wickedness. There's no, I mean, that's the height of human wickedness you can imagine. The core of atomic fire or nuclear fire is hotter than the core of the sun. So that means within maybe one mile to four miles radius, everything will be vaporized. I, I'm not saying you'll be burnt. No, vaporized. There may be, uh, depending on how far, far away you are, you might have third degree burn, second degree burn, and first degree burn. Not only that, there's a fallout of radiation, radiation sickness, diseases that people will begin to die. Now, this is judgment. This judgment is setting at the end of this age. It's a setting judgment. And we can boldly say that this wickedness, remember it says, this is how they look like all over the earth. Um, America has over a thousand of them that are ready to go. Just the press of the button with atomic warheads. Some of them have eight to 16 warheads in them. And um, one of the biggest bombs that was ever detonated was done by the Russians. And it's called Tsar Bomb. That's the king of bombs. I mean, that was... Anyway, no plane will ever carry such a bomb because it's too heavy. So that's why they put them you know, warheads on ballistic missiles. So that, this is how they look like all over the world. And remember it says, now the word for woman and fire, they are literally the same thing. Just only a little dot separates them. So this person who so was translating it, could not have the concept of what would a, what will fire be doing in a basket and covered with lead. So Ish, Isha, woman, so I put a woman there. So it's not that women, women are wickedness. No, that's not what it means. No. So that's the most beautiful thing God ever gave to us. So but it says that thing is wickedness, the fire. That's the either uranium or the pl uh, plutonium and everything that is put there. And it's encased in lead because of radiation. You understand that? So that's what it's talking about here. And these are flying scrolls. Like I said, Russia has over a thousand of them. America has a, a thousand of them that are active, that could go at the press of a button. And each of them have over $5,000. as to $5,000. <laughs> 5,000 more of them, you know, not yet active, that, that can be activated anytime. And not only that, you know, um, Iran is trying to do this also. You know, that's the goal. So you can imagine these things, you know, crisscrossing Russia, China, all over like that. And who are they interested in? They're interested in America. And that's why if you really want to be a Christian, be a Christian in America. Hallelujah. Because a day will come, these things will come flying. Whether we like it or not, it's going to happen in our generation. This wickedness will come what? Flying. And the destruction is, 
It's just too, too wicked. That's all we can say. And um, one was dropped in Hiroshima, and the other one was dropped in Nagasaki in 1945. So why are we talking about this? Because God is going to bring judgment by fire. That was the promise. Remember the rainbow? The rainbow is God's covenant that he will no longer destroy the earth with what? Water. But that he's going to destroy it with what? Fire. So those people who are carrying the rainbow, you know, they are declaring, oh, we have a covenant with fire. There's going to be a day, you know, that they are going to be what? Sanitized by fire. Now, what they are saying literally. So that's why you need to pray for anyone who carries the rainbow flag. You get what I'm saying? Because that's an abomination against God. And because of that, God says he's going to what? And okay, let's look at what happened here in Sodom and Gomorrah. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And then in the book of Jude, verse 1, uh, uh, Jude, verse 7, it says that suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. So it's not just being, being burned by fire, being vaporized by fire, but what? Their soul will suffer what? The vengeance of eternal fire. So, if anybody tells you yeah, God is a good God, yes, he's a good God, but God is also a just God. Hallelujah. And he, he, God so loved us that he gave us his only begotten son that will not what? Perish, but have life and have life more what? Abundantly. So he gave us his son. He said, I don't want you to go to hell that belongs to the devil and his angels. But I want you to what? Stay in the kingdom of my son. Now, governments are telling you, you can, they are legislating against the word of God. But when the time comes, they are not going to be there in, in, in that on judgment day, standing with you, oh, oh, he's American, she's American, and we gave them right to be anything they want to be. That will not hold water. So that's why you need to pray for them. Don't hate them. Love them. Pray for them. Because it's not only that what? They are going to be vaporized, but they will also suffer what? The vengeance of eternal fire. And not only them, every sinner, anyone who does not do right, will also end up there. So, and that's why God said... <clears throat> If your eye will cause you to sin, pluck it out. If your hand will cause you to sin, cut it off. It's better for you to go to heaven with one arm or maimed than to what end up in eternal fire, fire that never goes out. So that's why the sin situation must be dealt with. Jesus Christ came to help us to deal with what? The sin situation. So we need to accept the grace of God, the grace that has been poured out for us so that we will not perish. Amen? So we said God is going to judge the, uh, the world by what? Fire. Now, if God is going to judge the world by fire, well, anyway, we'll come back to that again um, because we're going to read from the book of Jude. And uh, see what uh, Jude has to say. So the next thing here now is, um, apart from God's judgment by fire, God also guides his people by what? Fire. He guides and protects us by fire. Sometimes you see a witch will tell you, oh, each time I see you, I see fire around you, you know. You know? So it's God, the consuming fire, that is what a wall of protection round about you. Amen? Amen? So just the same way, you know, when they were driven out of um, the Garden of Eden, we are told that uh, cherubim with flaming sorts of fire 
they are what? Guarding the tree of life. You are so important. God invested his very life for you. And that's why God must what? Protect his investment. You are God's greatest investment. Amen? Amen. So he has to protect his investment. And the Lord went forth before them, you know, when they were getting out of um, Egypt. God sent Moses as a deliverer. And um, as they left Egypt, the Pharaoh's army came after them. And we are told that the angel of God, okay, let's read it. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them in the way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and by night. Then in chapter 14, verse 24, it came to pass in the morning watch that the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians. So what happened was that they were being led by the pillar of fire and by the angel. And when the angel saw that the, um, the Egyptians were approaching, he moved from the front to the rear, protecting his people by what? Fire. Amen? And so in the morning watch, he looked through the pillar of fire, and then he began to trouble the Egyptians. May the Egyptians, after you, be troubled tonight. Amen? Let anyone that's after you, harassing you, be troubled tonight because God is going to look again through the pillar of fire and say, I will trouble them that trouble you. Hallelujah. Praise ye the name of the Lord. So I want you to understand that tonight God wants to trouble anything that is troubling you, troubling your mind, uh, your sanity, anything at all that troubles you. God says, I will trouble them that trouble you. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, we also see uh, the protection of the three Hebrew men. They, uh, they used to call them three Hebrew children. They were not children. <laughs> they are adults. <laughs> yes, you know them very well. Now, they were thrown into the fiery furnace. And then the king came up and said, Did we not throw three men into the fire? How come I see a fourth man? Hallelujah. So you see that God, who is the consuming fire, God came upon the three Hebrew men, amen? amen. And then they were protected from fire. So how does that work? I'll tell you, it's physics. In physics, fire will flow from a hot potential to a low potential potential. That means if I'm hotter than you, if I shake you, you know, heat will flow from me to you because my temperature is higher than your temperature. So we get burned because the kettle is very hot. It's hotter than what? Our normal temperature. So heat flows from that kettle or whatever it is, you know, and flows to us and we get burned, blistered because it's hotter. Now, so since the Hebrew children were covered by the consuming fire, then fire was flowing from them and consuming the what? The literal fire. And so that literal fire had no power over them. Amen? So your God, who is the consuming fire, in the day of trouble, he will show forth and deliver you. So you'll be able to say, no weapon formed against me shall what? Prosper. No weapon, whether it be atomic weapon, nuclear weapon, hydrogen bomb, whatever it is, it shall not what? Prosper. I want us to begin to have confidence in God that God says he will protect his investment. Amen? Amen. So you are God's investment and God says, I want to protect you. I want you to know. Hallelujah. So, apart from protection from God, 
We also see judgment by fire. Um, the, uh, we remember the story of um, Korah, Datan, and Abiram. They came against Moses and, um, and his brother Aaron. And they wanted the priesthood also. And then Moses said, come, God has given you your own part, your own portion. So are you looking for the priesthood also? And then Moses said, if these people died in natural death of all men, you know that I'm not called of God. You know that I'm not a servant of God. He said, okay, get your census. And they got their census and they offered um, uh, fire, of, I mean, uh, offering and all that stuff. And suddenly fire came down from heaven and burnt those 250 men with their senses. So judgment is by what? Fire. Amen? So God is going to judge the world by fire. Man is going to judge himself also by what? By fire. So it's going to be fire all over the place. So that's why we have to be what? Uh, come under the canopy of God. Come under what? The canopy of God. That we, you know, Jesus Christ said, the the prince of this world comes, but he has nothing in me. He has no hold on me. So the question we need to ask yourself today, what hold has the devil on your life? What is the devil keeping in your home? Does he have his property in your home? Then he has a right to visit you every night. A man of God, Smith Wiggles, what? Will not even allow a newspaper into his house. He said, they are full of lies. Not only that, they also have uh, astrological stuff inside. So I don't want that devilish thing in my home. So I hope we can treat the devil like that and say we don't want anything devilish, anything contrary to the word of God in our lives in our homes, because this body, we are the temple of the living God. And so God must be glorified in my body, must be glorified in your body. And that's why, you know, we have to make the choice never, never to come down from the cross. I preached out someone here some time ago, and um, that was a message given to me personally. And I wept while I was preparing that message. And I also wept while I was preaching the message. So you can imagine a weeping preacher. You are preaching and crying because you are talking to yourself. You get what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So that's a lesson in life because it says, can you imagine Jesus Christ came down from the cross? Or because some... Some people were saying, oh, if you be the son of God, come down from the cross. Show us that you are Superman. Show it to us and everything. He did not listen to them. And God said to me that come down from the cross as the voice of your detractors and the devil to bring you to a place where you become vulnerable and then they hit you hard. So why choose to come down from the cross? And he gave me a very interesting analogy. It looks so stupid, but it's, a, it's, it's what we actually do. So I want you to imagine um, um, I'm climbing uh, Mount Everest. It takes 40 days to get to the uh, apex, to the top. And then I have my, what's it called, uh, my satellite radio or phone. And then, of course, you know, we all... We have a spouse. You could be a man or a woman. And then you, you, you get a call. You are just two days away from reaching the top of Mount Everest. And then, and then your spouse calls you and curses you out and everything. Then you get so mad and say, I'm coming down to get you. <laughs> and then you turn around two miles away to reach the top of Everest. You spend almost 38 days, you know, and then you come all the way down to fight with your wife, to divorce her, or he divorces you, or whatever it is, and all that stuff. But you have to climb this mountain again. Is that not foolishness? But we do it every day. I remember fasting for 40 days. And the 38th day, I got angry. And then, why? 
why wasn't I patient? 38 days. Then I got mad. And at that point in time, I said, what's the use of all this fasting anyways? You know, so just then, you know, so that way we must what? watch your back. Because the devil wants to get at you. But when you listen to the voice of God, he will keep you in the path of what? Righteousness. Amen. That's why I don't want to ever come down from the cross because you don't know what day, you know, the enemy will come knocking to take advantage of you. Now, a call to righteousness. Let me see if I miss something out. So anyway, so um, Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, they were judged by fire, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them. You don't want to be in their shoes. Do you want to be? No, I don't think so. So let's go on. A call to righteousness. See, it's by his grace. God is not telling you to do what you cannot do. And what he actually said is this, you know, I'm your helper. I've sent you the Holy Ghost to what? Be your helper. So if you need help in any area, in any facet of your life, just ask me. That's why I'm there for you. So that means the grace you need to be what? Righteous. The grace to be what? An overcomer comes from him, from your helper, the Holy Spirit. So it's because we do not what? Engage him in our lives. That's why we are in trouble. Now a question was asked. It says, the sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearfulness has surprised the hypocrites. There are a lot of hypocrites in the church. You know that? Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with everlasting burnings? So that's the question. Who can approach the devouring fire, sit in the bosom of the devouring fire, and not be consumed? He said, yes, there are people who can do that. He said, he that what walketh righteously, that speaketh uprightly, he that despises the gain of oppression and shaketh his hands from holding bribes, that stopped his ears from hearing of blood and the rest of it. So it says, he who is what? Righteous. So if you are righteous, remember the Bible said that we are the righteousness of God in who? In Christ Jesus. So he has made us righteous. So believing in God, believing in Jesus Christ, receiving him as Lord and Savior and Master of our lives, then he makes us what? righteous. And so we can what? Approach the devouring fire. We can embrace God the devouring fire. Hallelujah. Because righteousness means that you can come boldly to the throne room of grace to obtain help at any time. And that fire will not what? Consume you. The Bible tells us in Isaiah, uh, sorry, in Hebrews 1 7, it's an angel's spirit and his ministers a flame of fire. God is literally making us into a flame of fire. You know, fire is not as hot as a flame. You know that? The flame is what? Hotter. Blue flame is hotter than regular fire. So, God is going to make us what? Flames of fire. And in uh, Hebrews 11 verse 34, we are told that people quench the violence of fire. Just like the, uh, the three Hebrew children, they were there in the furnace. Furnace had no effect on them. But there are some people, they were set on fire and the fire bowed and what? Went off. Set them on fire again. Fire says, I'm checking out. <laughs> and fire runs away. Set them on fire. Pour, pour grease upon them. Gasoline upon them. Set them on fire. And fire says, no, I can't burn this one. Hallelujah. Amen. So we are told that this hip, in the book of Hebrews, women were also involved. They quenched the violence of fire. Hallelujah. So a time will come. We might, uh, we might encounter this same violence of fire. 
It could be atomic fire, whichever way it comes. But one thing we know is this. If you are what on the right side with God, then what? A wall of fire, a wall of protection is round about you. So you can literally quench the violence of fire or what? Make it null and void of no effect. Why? Because our God is what? The consuming fire. So if you are a carrier of the consuming fire, carrier of the glory of God, the presence of God, then the fire of men will have no effect on you. Atomic fire will have no effect on you. Furnace of fire will have no effect on you. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. So that's what we are saying. No? That's why we must be bold. We must know what is us, what God has really given unto us. You see, what is important is this. That if you are a carrier of God, if you are a carrier of his glory, then all the protocols of heaven must be observed. Do you understand that? Now, if the president is going somewhere, he has what? Protocols. Is that right? Uh, the Air Force One will be there. The other planes will be there. Different things and all that to secure the president. Is that right? Now, if God is, if God is in the place, then the cherubim, the seraphim, you know, the archangels, and everything that surrounds the throne of God will be what? Present. So when, if God is in you, God is not in you just as an ordinary God, but as the real, real God. Hallelujah. Enthroned in your life with all protocols of heaven observed. Hallelujah. Is that understood now? You want me to explain it again? That means you are not alone. The throne of God is there. You are a carrier of the throne of God. There are angels, cherubim, seraphim surrounding you. Hallelujah. You are a carrier of God's glory, his presence. Hallelujah. Amen. So all protocols of heaven are what? All observed. Amen. So that's what we are saying. Now, Elijah, okay, this one is Leviticus 9, verse 24. Uh, in one of the offerings that Moses offered uh, at the beginning uh, of the, um, in the wilderness, the, uh, after they created the tabernacle in the wilderness, and when the sacrifice was set, what happened? Fire came down from heaven and what consumed the sacrifice. We also know that um, in the case of Elijah, that Elijah after he had told the people, why will you stand between two opinions? If God is God, follow him. If it's Baal, follow him. And let's show, you know, let, let there be a difference between who is really God. So he said, if God is God, follow him. If, if it's Baal, then follow him. So he said, okay, bring you two bullocks. You kill your bullocks, I will kill my bullocks, call upon your God, and the God that answers by fire, let him be God. And of course, they, they jumped up and down, they gyrated, did everything, and their God did not answer them. And Elijah said, maybe he's in the bathroom. <laughs> so anyway, they could not wake him up from his sleep also. And uh, then he said, okay, come and see my God. And he called fire from heaven. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice, the wood, the stones, the dust, and licked up the water that is in the trench. That's what our God will do. And we need to showcase our God. We need to brag about our God, what our God is able to do. Not only what he can do, but what he will do. Amen. Amen. So I want us to fall in love with God with all our hearts, because he will what? Defend his own. That's why it's called the, the captain of the host of the Lord. Amen. He shows up whenever you need him. Amen. Then we see also um, acceptable sacrifice, um, showing that your sacrifice accept, has been accepted. Fire also falls. So we see it in the case of Manua, fire fell. Also, I'm sure people don't remember David 
In 1 Chronicles 21, 26, David built an altar and put the sacrifice on it, and fire came from heaven and what consumed the sacrifice also. We also know the story of Solomon, that that also happened uh, for Solomon. He called down, you know, um, after he made offering, a thousand offerings and all that, fire came down from heaven and consumed the sacrifice, and the glory of God filled the temple that the ministers could not stand to minister. So that's what we are waiting for, we are looking for. We need to press into it, you know, not that some little chicken witch is after us. You know, I mean, can you imagine a, a, a three-day-old chick running after you? You're afraid, you're afraid. Kick the guy. <laughs> so that's what you do to, to what witches. You know, they, are the, they are the least in the, in the kingdom of darkness. They are just like the nobodies, the, the ruffians, you know, the street boys. That's what they are. Now, the question which we have to ask ourselves is whether we are what wheat or what chaff. Are you wheat or chaff? Because the Bible says he will gather the wheat into what his garners. But the, what the chaff he will burn with what? Unquenchable fire. So the question is, are you wheat or chaff? Are you truly a genuine, born again child of God? Or you are a hypocrite? Or you are a child of the devil? There was an old song, um, for those of you who were around in the 70s, it was a, um, the guy's name was Jimmy Cliff. You know, he sang a reggae, you know. He said, hypocrites, all of you hypocrites, and are you going to pay the price one day? And he could well be talking to Christians in churches. Hypocrites, hypocrites, hypocrites. So we need to stop all form of hypocrisy. Because God is the one that judges the heart. God is the one that sees the heart. And so, why would we live pretentious lives here? And then at the end of the day, you know, like, you remember the story about Lazarus and, um, and, uh, and the certain rich man? And then the man looked up and said, ah, Father Abraham, that's Lazarus. He was my servant. <laughs> that's Lazarus, not the beggar in front of my house. Can you send him to what? Just give me a, a you know, just a tip, you know, in the tip of his fingers, just a drop of water. And he said to him, okay, please, can you go and warn my siblings? I have siblings, five or seven of them, you know. Please go and warn them so that they don't come here. No, he said, no, 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 we are not going to send anybody. Because even if somebody came back from the dead, they will not believe. They have Brother Mike and they have Brother Francis here. Go and listen to them. <laughs> so he says, whose fan is in his hand? And he will thoroughly purge his floor and will gather the wheat into his garner. By the chaff, he will burn with fire unquenchable. Remember that word unquenchable fire over and over again, you know. In 2 Timothy 1 it says, In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Obey not. Are there Christians who do not obey the gospel? Yes. So it's not really talking to unbelievers here. Yeah? These are letters written to believers, to churches. They that what? Oh, there's, there's one story, you know, a very, very painful story. Um, there's this guy, uh, Renhard Bunke. He was holding a crusade somewhere. And just at about the close of the service, a lady was walking by him by him. And he grabbed the lady, said, please, do not let today pass you by. Do not let today pass you by. You know, give your life to Jesus Christ. He said, oh, I have a boyfriend. Oh, because of my boyfriend, I, you know. So the boyfriend was more important than giving her life to Jesus Christ. She left that place and died in a car crash that night. The next day they came to the man of God and said, you remember the lady you, 
you, you, you held her hand and pleaded with her passionately to give her life to Jesus Christ. She died yesterday night. So today is the day of salvation. Don't say tomorrow I will try and be better. You see, we live in a dangerous state or city. You know, we are, most of the time we are number one in accidents in the whole of America. We are number one or sometimes second position behind Houston. So you see, lots of people die every day in Phoenix in motor accidents. So going out and coming in is by the grace of God. You can finish quarreling with your wife or your husband and everything and then he never comes home again. That was the last time. And you'll have which, oh, I wish I gave him a hug. I wish I didn't cuss him out. Oh, it was because of me that he drove out of the house. And then he was not conscious of what he was doing and was involved in an accident. These are realities of life. Absolute realities of life. So the question is whether what we are wheat or chaff. Because God is going to what? In flaming fire. In what? Flaming fire. It could be atomic fire. It could be the same fire that fell from uh, that on Sodom and Gomorrah. You can literally go to Sodom and Gomorrah today and pick up some of the sulfur that fell. You can still find them in pellet forms no, and then light them on fire and it will melt steel. It will what? Melt steel. So God has arsenals in the heavens there. Fire that will fall someday. Meteorites, you know, asteroids that will begin to fall and all that stuff. So when, I don't know. But it could well be, you know, that it's just going to be a car accident in Phoenix here that will take you out. But are you right with God? So that's why we must not play with our salvation. Amen? Now, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. It said, by the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So we see judgment by fire is coming upon this earth. God is going to rain fire down from heaven. Like Moses called down fire from heaven. God is going to what? Rain down fire from heaven. Like Elijah. You remember the story of Elijah? They wanted to arrest, uh, arrest Elijah. And he said, if I be a man of God, let fire fall down. And the fire consumed those 50 men and their captain. You see, we use fire to fight our battles. Fire is also what? A defense. So that's why we must fall in love with the consuming fire. We must sit down on the laps of the consuming fire. Because we have clean hands. He has declared us righteous. Because he says he will purify the sons of Levi. He wants to purify us like silver and gold is purified. He wants us to be clean. Amen. And the angel took the censer, this Revelation 8, 5, and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. So there's coming judgment by fire. Also in Revelation 8:8, 8, 8, we see a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. And then we are told in Revelation 9:18, by these three was the third part of men killed by the fire, by the smoke, and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouth. So now we see uh, that's the story also of um, the, um, what they call, the two witnesses. No, there are men that you should not mess around with. There are men like Elijah. Say, hey, if I be a man of God, <laughs> and they are toasted. You know, that's what it means. So the two witnesses, 
Fire will literally come out of the mouth of the two witnesses. They are only what an example. God just showing you that you can do that also. Amen. It just can say the things that I do, you two can do also, even greater things. So if the two witnesses can what? Spit fire, then you can spit fire also. Hallelujah. Because you will need it for a defense someday. Just like uh, the government said, go and, arrest, uh, uh, go and arrest Elijah. Elijah said, if I be a man of God, <laughs> get toasted. And they were toasted. So that what happened. <laughs> now, there's going to be fire, fire, fire everywhere. Whether it's atomic fire, furnace of fire, fire from the two witnesses, fire from the angels, you know, releasing fire upon the earth, you know, and uh, God releasing fire. It's going to be fire everywhere. And we are told that that's talking about the two witnesses. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceeded out of their mouth and devoured their enemies. And, and if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. So we see fire all over the place. Because this is the age of what? Fire. We have atomic fire already. And we have thousands of them, at least 2,500 atomic fires that look like um, that look like this. They are ready to fly. A man of God called William Marion Branham in 1933 saw seven visions about the end of the world. Let me go to the last two visions. The last two visions, he said, he saw an electric, no, he said he saw a plastic bubble car. Remember cars in, the, in 1933, they were wide like these funny looking cars, you know. And now he said he saw a plastic and oval car. He saw it, and that was not all. He said he saw people sitting in the car and were playing checkers or cards, and the car was driving itself. Are we not there right now? You could go to um, Tempe and ride in one. You know that? Okay. So that is already there. Not only that, the second one was that he saw a woman a very beautiful and wicked woman in high position in America. So we already have one in, almost at the White House. Is that right? A vice president. That's the highest place a woman has been in America. He said um, he saw a woman like that. And then he said uh, in 1961, he said he saw this woman wearing purple color, taking the oath of office. So we are only just a blink of an eye away from having a woman president. So these are the two visions that are almost happening to the very letter. And then the seventh vision is that he saw craters all over America, fire all over America. That's what he saw. And uh, about 15 years ago, I had a very strange dream. I was in one of the uh, SSS, you know, those big uh, ships and everything. And I saw people, they were dressing, going for dinner. Some people were dressing, going for movies and all that stuff. But in my spirit, I sensed that something was wrong, you know, that missiles were coming into America. And then I ran to the ship deck to talk to uh, the soldier who was supposed to be on alert. I said, hey, I want to enlist. I want to fight because missiles are coming against us. But they were just lousy they, as if they didn't care. They didn't know oh, what they were supposed to do. And then the next thing, missiles were falling all over America, just like in the same vision, like uh, William Branham, craters all over. So we are going to be visited by fire, whether we like it or not. So the question is, on whose side are 
you. Now, so we see um, in Revelation 16, verse 8, the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire. Then uh, in uh, Second Samuel, said, there went up a smoke out of his nostrils, and fire out of his mouth devoured, coals were kindled by it. So through the brightness before him were coals of fire kindled. God is going to walk on the earth again and things will begin to happen. And the light of Israel shall be for a fire and his only one for a flame and shall burn and devour his tongues and his briars in one day, Isaiah 10, 17. For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. Now there is this interesting scripture in Isaiah 4 verse 5. And I use it to pray every night. I say, God, I thank you for the pillar of fire by night and the pillar of cloud by day. Because you said upon all our dwelling places, the glory shall be for a defense. Let your glory defend my home. Let your glory defend my, um, my community. I use it as, as a prayer point. And the Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion. And upon her assemblies, a cloud and smoke by day, and the shining of a flaming fire by night. For upon all, the glory shall be a defense. Now, I want us to pray some prayers, and then um, before we go into deliverance. Because it's very important that we, that we are pushed away from every dross in our lives. Now, there's no place for the devil. Amen. So we are going to ask the fire of God to come and burn in our souls. You know, our thoughts, our imaginations, and all those things, you know, all those things that the devil uses against us to come and burn and purify them. So we're going to do some praying. Uh, let's see how much time do I see have left. Okay, I'll try and walk so that we start prayer shortly. Now in Malachi chapter 3, verse 3. We are told that, and he shall see it as a refiner and purifier of silver. Because what? You know, uh, he will purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto God an offering in righteousness. Hallelujah. So God wants to know it's his desire. Say, come here. Okay, what do you want me to burn away from your life? Come, let's, let's start the work. No, it starts burning you, burning you. Yeah, you might shout and cry somewhat, you know, but that's also good. You get what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, you are purified. Amen? You know, um, we have some ladies here. Some of you might have diamonds in your ring, but do you know how that diamond came about? It was ugly before, an ugly stone. Somebody took it, washed it, and then took it to the machine, and began to cut it. Each cut, you know, just imagine yourself, you are that stone. But God said, hey, I want you to shine. I want you to become beautiful. And then he gives you the first cut. Ah! <laughs> but he has to make 66 cuts. So each one, more pain, more pain, more painful, and everything. But at the end of the day, you know, after the 66 Caught, you know, then just a little light we just what strike it. Cha, 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 cha. Hey, looking beautiful. Yes, it went through what? A process. So let's surrender ourselves to the processing of God, to the testing of God, so that we'll be purified. Amen. Amen. So and it shall sit as a refiner of so let's pray right now. Let's stand up and pray. I want you to say fire of God. You know, that's, a, that's some smelting going on here, you know. Fire of God, sanctify me and purify me for your glory. Begin to talk to God right now, you know. Don't, don't pray like a, like a baby, you know. Pray like what? A real soldier, amen. Fire of God. <laughs> sanctify and purify me. For your glory. 
begin to talk to God right now because you know the areas you need sanctification. You need the areas that you need burnings for, you know. You need, you know, the area that needs to be cut. Say, God, begin to cut me, Lord. Cut me, Lord. Cut me, Lord. Purify me, Lord God. Form me by fire. Form me by fire. Hallelujah. Mashapra take a koto shere. Meko preteke yele masantaya. Invite the fire of God to purify you. That, that little rat running around in your life called demons. Oh, set them on fire. Set them on fire. Set them on fire. Mashapra teke baseke yak. Oh, Holy Ghost. Come and purify me. Come and purge away any demon, any distractions, anything in my life. Oh, be consumed by fire. Be consumed by fire. Be consumed by fire. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. Number two. Amon Sinai was altogether on a smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. And the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace. And the whole mountain quaked greatly. Exodus 19.18 So I want us to pray. Say, Father, Father, let your fire descend upon my life. And upon ADC. And let us experience the fear of God. Begin to pray right now. Because many of us, we don't fear God. We have no reverence for God at all. But you need to experience the fear of God. So let the fire of God descend again like it was in Mount Sinai. Oh, let the fire fall again. Let the fire fall again. Oh, and they quaked. They quaked. They were afraid. Let the fear of God come upon us. Let the fear of God come upon us. Fire of God, sanctify me and purify me for your glory. Let the fear of God come upon me. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Oh, the fear of God. Oh, the reverence for God. I need it. We need the reverence of God. The fear of God. Oh, let fire come and purify us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. Prayer point number three. But unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings and you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. Malachi 4.2 and also Matthew 4.20 says and he healed them all. We're going to pray. Lightning of God search and strike at the root of any disease and sickness in my body. Search and what? Destroy. This is not, no, uh, we are not trying to serve anything here. We want to what? Destroy. Search and what? Destroy. Holy Ghost, search and destroy every seed of sickness, every root of sickness, every root of diseases, every root of harassment in my mind, in my soul, by demons. Search and destroy. Search and destroy. Search and destroy. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, fire of God, sanctify me and purify me for your glory. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, my car protege. Search and destroy. What do you want to be destroyed in your life? Speak to it right now. Speak to it now, quietly. So, God, come, search and destroy. This harassment, it ceases today. Tonight is the night that God looks through the pillar of fire and trouble, that trouble that troubles you. Hallelujah. 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 Exodus Leviticus 9.67 And the cloud covered the tent of the congregation and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Moses said, This is the thing which the Lord commanded that ye should do and the glory of the Lord shall what? Appear unto you. These are the things you should what? Do so that what the glory of God will appear unto you. Amen. 
What did he say they should do? He says, and Moses said unto Aaron, go unto the altar and offer sin offering. Repent of your sins. Ask God to forgive you. you know? And thy burnt offering, and make an atonement for thyself and for the people. And offer the offering of the people, and make an atonement for them, as the Lord commanded you. So once you do this, then wash your clothes, you know, and then appear before God on the third day, and then you he will receive you. Remember the other one that we read earlier on? You know, that how um, the righteous can sit in the bosom of fire and will not be burned. Amen? Because we can come to the consuming fire. So I want us to really pray. I want us to really pray that the fire of God, that the fire of God will what? No, no, no. We're going to pray that the cleansing process that will be purged and cleansed by fire. Oh God, purge me and cleanse me by fire. That, that there's nothing that offend in my life anymore. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Begin to talk to God. Now, oh God, purge me and cleanse me by fire. Oh, sanitize me by fire. Wash me, oh Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Macabra, take a basket. I offer myself as a living, living sacrifice unto you, O oh God. Come and do to me what you, you only can do, Lord. Come and purify me, Lord. Come and cleanse me, O oh God. You are alone, O oh God. Help me, Lord. You are my helper. You are my helper. You are my helper. I call upon your name today. Tonight, I call upon your name for total healing, total deliverance, total protection. Preservation in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire shot up in my bones. Begin to pray right now that the fire of God will be upon your bones. The fire of God upon your bones. The fire of God upon your soul. You know, your souls. You know, that's where the devil attacks your soul. The attachment, the, the, the soul attachments and all that stuff. Tell the fire of God to begin to what? Separate that which offends from your soul. Amen? Begin to pray right now. This is your work. This is what you got to do. You know, it's not just saying, um, come out, come out, come out. No. You tell the devil you don't want to have business with him anymore. In the name of the Lord Jesus, because the Bible says, but as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. So God wants to fill your life with overflowing. He wants to fill your life with his glory. So begin to talk to God right now. God, wash me, cleanse me. Fill me with your glory. Let your fire burn in my life. Let your fire burn in my soul. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, let your fire and glory rest upon this temple. And your word in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. Shut up in my bones in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I'll quickly tell you a story here. And uh, a, man, a, king went to meet the, uh, a king went to meet Elisha, the prophet. And Elisha said, open the window. He said, shoot forth an arrow. And he shot forth an arrow. And then he said, and he said, open the window eastward. And he opened it. Then Elisha said, shoot. And he shot. And he said, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance and the arrow of deliverance from demonic oppression. Hallelujah. Amen. The arrow of the Lord's deliverance and the arrow of deliverance from what? All oppressions. Amen. Say, for you shall smite all the, call any name you want to call those demons and everything, you shall smite them. Tonight is, uh, is we are going to what? Smite, smite, and what? Smite. Amen. Said, see what? You consumed them. And he said, take the arrows. And he took them. And he said unto the king of Israel, smite upon the ground. And he smote th three times and stayed. And the man of God was so angry with him and said, that should have smitten five or six times. Then that will have what? Smitten the Syrians till that has consumed it. Whereas now that that shall smite Syria only three times. You see, when we tell you to pray, don't be 
Don't be praying chicken prayers. Chicken prayers. No, that's not how to pray. Pray with the raw. Amen? Pray with vengeance. Pray because you don't really want that situation in your life anymore. You, you don't, uh, you, you, you see, the doctors say you have to manage your sickness. No, we don't manage demons. We don't what? Manage demons. You know demons, no, they are going to end up in fire. Remind them, talk to them right now. Say, hey, you got trouble in me? Fire is your end. So you better get out right now because I'm going to what? Call upon fire. Call fire to come upon you right now if you do not leave. So speak to these situations. Don't wait. You can deliver yourself. You don't need anybody to stand and start shouting, come out, come out, come out. No, you deliver yourself right now by telling the fire of God to purge you, fire to burn at, uh, at anything that stands in your path, those demonic oppressions, you know. Let fire come and do its perfect work. Fire is a good sanitizer. I'm sure very soon we'll, we'll be doing some barbecuing. You know, the weather is nice now. You know, initially you see flies coming around, you know. Flies wanting to patch around until what you fire the oven. Hmm? When you fire it, even the demons are sensible. The flies are sensible. Say, fire is burning. I don't want to mess with fire. So, want to set you on fire tonight so that demons will look at you and say, that man is burning. I won't mess with him. Hallelujah. That woman is burning. I won't mess with her. Hallelujah. Will you set yourself on fire tonight? Will you really mean it and say, Lord, I call upon the consuming fire to come upon my life, to consume anything that is wrong in my soul and in my body. Begin to pray now. Begin to pray. Don't just strike once, twice, no? He was so mad. He said, why did you strike only twice? You should strike like this. Pa, 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 pa. That's the way you deal with the devil. You shoot at the devil. Shoot at the devil until what? He's consumed. Hallelujah. So tonight you have opportunity. Don't do like the king, you know. Strike at the devil. Strike at those demons over and over again. Now begin to pray. Because God says, I will overturn, overturn, overturn it. Until he comes, whose right it is, and I'll give it to him. It's your right to, you know, as, uh, you know to have freedom. It's your right, uh, because the Bible says, uh, healing is the children's bread. Deliverance is the children's bread. So eat of your bread today. It belongs to you. Deliverance is yours. Healing is yours. So don't play around. Don't manage the devil. Don't man manage any demon. Strike at the devil over and over and over again right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Begin to pray. Begin to pray right now. I release fire. I release fire against every planting of the enemy. Anything that offends in my life, receive the judgment of fire. Anything that harasses me in my dream life, I release fire against it. I release fire against it. Anything that comes to my mind, harassing my mind, my brain, release, I release the judgment of fire. Fire, fire, fire. I'm not going to say fire three times. I'm going to say fire on this all burnt away. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. He said, you know what to do? You know what to do? He pointed. He said, that's the glass ceiling there. Break the glass ceiling. Break the glass ceiling. Hallelujah. 